Some say it looks like a spider. Others have said it looks like a table just flipped upside down. Either way, I kind of like it. What's up YouTube, Jason here with Bite My Bits and in today's video, I have a new replacement to my main wireless router. This is the Archer AX6000 wireless router from TP-Link. Rocking the latest 802.11ax Wi-Fi technology, commonly referred to as Wi-Fi 6, the AX6000 is capable of a theoretical maximum Wi-Fi bandwidth capacity of 5,952 megabits per second. It hits this number by use of its eight high-gain antennas with dual-band 2.4 and 5 gigahertz frequencies, getting 4,804 megabits on 5G and 1,148 megabits per second on 2.4. In the back, it comes packed with eight total gigabit LAN ports, and for the few lucky people who can use it, a WAN port capable of 2.5 gigabits per second. Which actually, since most of the world is still trying to get gigabit service to their house from their ISP, let alone 2.5 gigabit service, this high-speed WAN port would let an AX6000 work fantastic as just an access point to an already existing network. It has the option for that, by the way. Let's imagine that you already have a PFSense router set up connected to a 10 gig switch. This thing could offer you significantly faster speeds and communication between wireless and wired devices throughout your entire network. I mean, yes, you'd be limited by a 2.5 gig port, but still, that's much better than a gig port, so. And yes, I know that's kind of a special use case scenario, but you know, that's what I do. So as soon as I get a 10 gig switch, I'm gonna be in that spot where I have a 2.5 hooked up to a 10 gig connection. Now on the side of the router, you get two options to connect USB storage, both USB 3.0 and USB type C. And it's very easy to get working as a shared folder on your network. However, I used a Samsung T5 USB type C SSD that I know reads and writes at more than 500 megabits per second. But when I used the 802 dot 11 AX connection from my X570 godlike Ryzen motherboard, I could only get speeds of around 60 to 70 megabytes per second, which is basically half a gigabit per second. And hammering writes to the SSD from multiple PCs on my network at the same time, both from wired and wireless computers, I was still unable to break speeds of 110 megabytes per second. And since I was using an SSD that I know can handle much higher speeds, my only conclusion is that the whole USB storage thing significantly needs improvement. Powered by a 1.8 gigahertz quad core processor and one gigabyte of RAM, the AX6000 is built to handle just about anything you can throw at it. And for me, the fastest wireless thing I could throw at it was my X570 Ryzen build with a dual channel 802.11 AX card in it. With that car to get a connection speed of up to 2.4 gigabits per second, which compared to my old one, which is an 802.11 AD card in my X299 build that can only connect at 866 megabits per second. Meaning I need to buy more networking gear in order to keep up with the AX6000. But I did run iPerf3 on two different computers, eight streams each, and was able to achieve speeds of 1.5 gigabits per second. Definitely not the 2.4 gigabits per second, I was kind of hoping for at least two, but it's still faster than gigabit network and during my test, I decided to run a speed test on my phone connected to the Wi-Fi and it did not flinch at all. So I think it might be more of a limitation of the card that I have. Because to follow up with this testing, I also set up shares with those same computers and copied files over to them simultaneously and was still only able to get about 1.5 gigabits per second. And again, while I was doing that, I ran a speed test off of my phone. It did not affect the speed at all. So that more or less confirmed that I wasn't pushing the router to its maximum. I was just limited by the hardware that I have to test it with. But the AX6000 is built to give more devices more bandwidth. With a special focus on all of those smaller Internet of Thing devices that everyone's adding to their household, sending little packets of data here and there, clogging up the airways. That's basically where this thing comes in and just crushes. So although it does offer more total bandwidth than other routers in its price range, that's not even its greatest strength. With 802.11ax or Wi-Fi 6, the AX6000 uses OFDMA to handle more devices more efficiently and can even increase battery life on some devices. In short, OFDMA allows the router to send multiple packets of information to multiple devices at the same time through a single channel. Whereas with older routers, even though they do have multiple channels, each channel can only communicate with one device at a time. So it's a little bit like the pizza delivery person in your neighborhood. Let's say they get a bunch of orders for pizza and they can only deliver one pizza at a time. Of course, it's going to take forever. Now imagine that same pizza delivery person being able 
able to take multiple pizzas and deliver them all in the same amount of time it would have taken to get one pizza delivered. That's the difference between the old standard and Wi-Fi 6. Without diving too much into it, it basically just jams as much data as it can into each burst of information, and it's serving multiple devices while it's doing that. That way you don't have something equivalent of like a Prius-sized packet of data taking up an entire highway worth of data just to get from point A to point B. Meanwhile, all the real cars in the world are just like waiting for their chance to use the highway. And no, that wasn't necessarily a jab at a Prius. Okay, maybe a little bit. And this is actually a huge deal nowadays because all of the smart devices we are adding to our homes. You may have a few bandwidth hungry devices playing games or streaming high quality video, but everything like your smart thermostat, light switch, garage door opener, cameras, or maybe even your refrigerator all require constant communication of small bits of information to and from your router. This is usually handled very quickly and by adding more channels, it makes all of this happen in the background seem like it's not really a problem at all. It's not until you get to a dozen or two two different devices that you start to notice lag in your network. Also, the AX6000 uses beam steering to make sure that all of your clients are running on the most optimal network, working along with airtime fairness to make sure that the more power hungry devices get the attention that they want, and those devices that don't really need a lot of data, they kind of sit in the background. Actually, there's kind of like this scheduled check-in thing where like a smart device that doesn't need to check in every five seconds can instead say, hey, I'll check back with you in like two minutes just to tell you I'm still alive. And then the whole scheduling thing in the background goes on and they work together and then next thing you know you have better battery life on some of these devices. It's kind of interesting. Honestly. Now comparing the signal strength and speed to my old router, the TP-Link C5400, I got very similar coverage all over my house, but noticed an increase in speed by about 50 to 100 megabits per second in the far corners. So this is definitely an upgrade for me, but if I ever want service all the way out to my street, I'm going to have to bring the router out of the basement. Now one thing I've actually never used before that I was kind of impressed by is the TP-Link's app called Tether. It's something that you can install on your phone, and even though I didn't do it, you can use Bluetooth to connect to your router to get everything initialized, which I think is pretty cool and it just kind of makes everything super easy. But you can tie your router to a TP-Link account and you can remotely manage your router from anywhere you have internet connection. So if somebody is complaining that their Xbox is having some lag and you want to log in from the office to increase their priority, you can do that. Oh, and I don't actually use either one of these, but apparently this works with Alexa and IFTTT, or if. So let's say if little Timmy fires up the Xbox and wants to go live on Twitch, you can like, you know, make it prioritize the Xbox and the streaming PC for encoding video or something. Actually, you know what? Let me know in the comments down below what you think you could use that for. And of course, with all of these consumer grade routers in this price range, they're gonna come with some of those expected features. Stuff like being able to prioritize certain devices or certain type of traffic like gaming or video streaming, for example. Making sure that that data is on the forefront of your router's attention and not being pushed back and waiting in line to be used. And parental controls with virus protection. So if you've got little ankle biters running around trying to download you know, viruses from shady websites, you can either A, block the viruses or B, just just block the little ankle biters from accessing shady websites altogether. So the TP-Link AX6000 is a beast of a wireless router, offering the latest and greatest in Wi-Fi 6 technology. And while Wi-Fi 6 is still relatively young and not as widely used yet, it offers a lot of network optimizations that our new lifestyles can take advantage of. I mean, since we're kind of getting to the point where you have to sign into Wi-Fi to screw in a light bulb or flush your toilet, Something like this was bound to happen. Networks now and networks tomorrow are going to need to be able to handle dozens, possibly even a hundred different devices all at the same time. And a lot of those just send like little tiny packets, but they're still noisy. And let's not forget the raw speed that 802.11ax offers. I mean, my Ryzen build has a two channel card, but with one channel, it's 1.2 gigabits per second. Meaning that wired networking at this point is the bottleneck. Of course, if you'd like to learn more about the TP-Link AX6000, links will be down in the description below. This thing has a lot to offer, a lot of specs, and I kind of feel like I only scratched the surface, so definitely check out the links if you would like to learn more. Also, I heavily recommend you check out a Wi-Fi 6 video that I found when I was doing my research. It actually breaks down and kind of explains a lot of what Wi-Fi 6 brings to the table and is pretty interesting to watch. His name is Network Chuck, and I will link to his video down below as well. So as always, guys, thank you for watching. Like and subscribe and have yourself a great day like like literally on this point where i mean i mean i mean it's literally at that point where, i mean it's literally at, i i mean it i mean it's literally at that point where meaning that meaning that oddly enough wired meaning that wired
Meaning that, <coughs> meaning that oddly, meaning that oddly enough, at this point, wired net. Meaning that oddly enough, at this point, wired network. So as always, guys, thank you for watching. Like and subscribe, and have yourself a great morning, a great brunch, a great breakfast, a great Hanukkah, a great Kwanzaa, a great Christmas. Have yourself a great Halloween because it's so close. It's like a month and a half, eh, kinda.